Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerintrainingexam.com and in this video we're going to review matrix algebra and more specifically matrix multiplication. So when talking matrix multiplication there are two cases we may run into. Number one we might run into a matrix multiplied by a scalar or, or uh, just a number or we'll run into a matrix multiplied by another matrix. So in case number one, when we encounter a multiplication of a matrix by a number, you simply multiply each element in that matrix by that same number, producing a new matrix called a scalar matrix. So for example, say we have a scalar Say we have this scalar x equal 2 and then we have a matrix A, uh, let's say the elements are 54, 45, 85, and 65. So say we want uh, 2A because our scalar is 2. All we do is multiply each element within uh, matrix A and we get 108, 90, 170, and 130 as our new matrix. So when given two ma matrices A and B, the matrix product A B can be defined only if the number of columns in A equals the number of rows in B. So to put this in a general form, let's say that we have matrix A and matrix A is a I by J. It has I rows and J columns. Now B, and let's say we have matrix B, and that has J rows and K columns. So notice how there's the same number of columns in A as there are rows in B. So this is a, these two matrices are able to be multiplied together. So each element in the new matrix can be computed using the general formula C, I, K, so the number of rows or the new matrix inherits the number of rows from A and the number of columns from B. So any element C, I, K, uh, the general formula is the sum up to J of A, I, J times B, J, K. So that's our general formula where C I K is the element in row I and column K and of the new matrix C and A I J is the element in row I and column J of the matrix A and B J K is the element in row J and the column K of matrix B. So formulas in this general form obviously don't mean much to us until we see it in an example. So let's let's go ahead and look at an example and how we would go about multiplying two matrices. Say we have one matrix here, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we have a second that's equal to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So notice right off the bat that there's two rows here and two columns in B. So we can actually multiply these two matrices together. So say we want A times B. Well that's going to give us a new matrix C and C is going to de be defined as this. What we do to determine, like I said, the number of rows before, I said this before, the number of rows is inherited or the new matrix C inherits the number of rows in matrix A and it inherits the number of columns in matrix B. So since there's two rows in A and there's two columns in B, this is going to be a two by two matrix. So we're looking for four total elements. So let's show you how to do this. Let's say we want C11. Element C11 is going to be equal to zero times six plus one times eight plus 2 times 10. 
So as you notice, we work across row one and down column one of B to get the first element C11, and that comes out to 28. Now, how about C12? What do you think we do for C12? Well, we work across, again, row one, but now we work down column two because we're looking for the C12. We're looking for the element in column two. So we go zero times seven plus one times nine plus two times 11, which is equal to 31. So what about C21? Well, C21 is, is it's the same way as we did C11 and C12, but now we're working in row two. We're working row two on column one in this case, and then for C22, we'd work row two with column two in, uh, in the second matrix. So let's just quickly uh, illustrate these. Three times six plus four times eight plus five times 10, which is equal to 100. And then we got C22 is going to be equal to three times seven plus four times nine plus five times 11, which is equal to 112. So these are our four elements in our new matrix C. So real quickly, given two matrices A and B, matrix multiplication may be defined for AB, but not necessarily BA, or it can be defined for both directions. However, even when it is possible in both directions, the resulting matrix may, may not be the same. So in other words, AB does not always equal BA. So because order is important in the multiplication of matrices, to be consistent in our language, we can say that the product AB is equal to, in, in words, A post multiplied by B, or that, or this could be written as B is pre-multiplied by A. So post-multiplied and pre-multiplied will tell us the order in which we are multiplying the two matrices. So whatever the case, remember that unlike subtraction and addition where order is not important, in matrix multiplication order is is important so that's all I got for you guys I hope uh, that review clarified how to do matrix multiplications you might have to rewind this and just go through that example one more time but going through a couple examples you'll get it real quick it's fairly simple process and uh, you just uh, just run it over and over and over it uh, doesn't matter what type of matrix you got so if you guys have any questions, run on over to engineerintrainingexam.com. Uh, shoot me uh, an email through the contact or sign up for the free EIT preparation boot camp and personally email me any questions, suggestions. I love feedback, so if you guys want to feedback, put feedback on this video or subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome and I'd be honored. Uh, but uh, regardless, we'll be talking soon. All right, take care.